Welcome everybody. I'm just going to give it a moment for everybody to enter the Zoom room and get settled and have everything load up. Welcome, welcome. It's lovely to have you all here. Welcome and happy Take Me Outside Day. Today's the official day, the 13th annual Take Me Outside Day. Uh, it's wonderful to have you all here and celebrating with us today. And if you're brand new, if this is your first event of the week, then welcome. This is a great one to join in on. And if you've been following along for the week so far, uh, welcome back. I hope you enjoy today. And of course, I hope you head outside after this, but this is a really wonderful way to celebrate all together and just have a little bit of fun uh, with Remy here, who I'll introduce in a moment. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with kind of what this is all about, um, Take Me Outside Day started 13 years ago when TMO's uh, executive director, Colin Harris, ran across Canada. And TMO Day was the day he finished his run. So we've been celebrating that for 13 years and it's actually grown into a whole week of events, speakers, activities, fun and prizes and all that good stuff. So uh, welcome. And for those of you who are joining and getting your bearings on Zoom and everything like that, there's some information in the chat so that you can participate in um, the best way possible. Uh, our mission at Take Me Outside is to encourage folks to spend more time outside learning, playing uh, in every single day that they can. And that's why I'm encouraging you to head outside after this. And today is actually the special celebration of Take Me Outside Day. We're doing something new this year. We want you to head outside and create some art, get inspired. Artists like Andy Goldsworthy and James Brunt, they create these beautiful pieces of art in nature from materials they find and forage. And we want you to go outside and do that and create some giant art or small art. It doesn't matter, but we're going to create a giant mosaic of all of that art together. So... We have resources on our website to help get you started um, so that you have some ideas if you don't know where to begin. And we really want to see what you create today. So you can email us, um, you can use the hashtag, you can tag us on social media, all those kinds of things. And we will then create a massive mosaic. We know there's people from multiple countries participating in all ages. And we're just really excited about this. So this is something new we're doing this year. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to reach out and we'll get you what you need. Uh, so before we begin today, I just want to situate myself and where I'm joining in from. So I live on Vancouver Island in British Columbia in Canada. And the land that I live on is the traditional territory of the Coatzin people, and the Cowichan tribes and the Hulkaminam speaking people. Uh, right now, today, it is a very blustery, rainy, gray day. A uh, huiseleno is a Hulkaminam word that talks about the time when the leaves are falling from the trees. And I know a lot of leaves are falling from the trees outside as I'm speaking right now, which I, will be great for making the nature art I create later. And so maybe you're noticing changes happening right now in the fall and as summer has ended and fall has begun. So I'm excited to hear more about those. And if you know where you're joining in from, I would love it if you wrote a hello in the chat so we can all see, you know, your, if you want to write where you're joining in from, what grade you're in, all those types of things, um, what your class is up to today. We know we're in webinar mode, so we can't see your beautiful faces, but the chat is a wonderful way to just know you're all there and all over, oh, there's over a hundred classes here right now. So we love it when people use the chat. And Anything else about Zoom that you need to know, uh, we have closed captions enabled. So if those are useful to you, you can turn them off or on using the Zoom settings. It's usually the more button at the bottom. Uh, you're automatically muted and video is off because we're in webinar mode, so no problem there. Uh, anything else? Um, we will do a prize at the end. We'll, we'll have four prizes actually at the end. And if you submit a question to ask Remy, then you will draw from those submitted questions to win a prize. So if you wanna win a prize, you have to ask a question. So think of some good questions to ask Remy after his performance and uh, you might win a prize. I'll announce those at the end. So stay to the end there. And 
I'm going to give a special thanks to Remy and introduce him in a moment. Uh, we love celebrating Take Me Outside Day, and I can't think of a better person to do it than my friend Remy here, who I got to meet in person in May very briefly at the conference we had in Banff, but a lot of the times we're just hanging out virtually here. And so Remy, if you haven't seen him before, you're in for a treat. And I mean, if you have, then it's just great because you know how great he is. Um, he's bilingual, so there'll be, I'm sure there'll be some French today, hey? Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit of French here and there. Um, so yeah, Re Remy's bilingual. He teaches up north in the Yukon. Um, he's a teacher and a biologist. He has performed on all the continents, even Antarctica. So I don't know, maybe I'll ask a question about that. And um, has degrees in biology and environmental outdoor experiential education. And you're probably gonna learn something as you are listening and singing along today. So we're very excited to have Remy here today. So thanks Remy, I'll pass it over to you. Woohoo! Well, Stephanie, thanks so much for that great introduction, and thanks to Take Me Outside for having me here yet another year. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a great honor and pleasure to be part of the Take Me Outside organization. Uh, every year, it just gets better and better. And as Stephanie said, I was able to go to the uh, the national conference that they had in the spring, and that was an amazing event. So I encourage any teachers or educators or parents to get out and uh, get to that if you can in this coming year. So as, um, as Stephanie situated herself, I will do the same. I think that's a good idea. So here's a map of Canada, as you know, and up there at that little point is where I am right now. It's uh, called Beaver Creek. It's Canada's most westerly community, meaning it's the farthest west you can get. Um, and uh, if you kind of look down Vancouver's down around here somewhere Vancouver Island where Stephanie is eh, it's way farther east than here uh, um, also on the uh, traditional territory of the White River First Nation where I am honored to work and play and live and um, right now I've got uh, uh, I'm think pretty sure that the, the students that I work with uh, are uh, at the known the Bessie John School are there listening and uh, it's it's I say it's a great honor to uh, to be here with them and in this community. Uh, so um, we have all the leaves are falling here now. It's, we're well into winter. We already have snow. We've actually been out kick sledding um, uh, with with the kids and um, a little bit more, and we'll be cross country skiing. All right. Well, without any further ado, I am going to uh, start out with. Probably my most famous song. Uh, it's called What's That Habitat? And um, when we go outside to uh, do our events today and, and every day, um, I want you to keep in mind that everywhere we go is a habitat for some different kind of animal and ourselves. And the four things that habitat is made up of is our food, water, shelter, and space. Here, I'll bring up a little image to help you with that. So the song's called What's That Habitat? En français, c'est quoi l'habitat? And food, water, shelter, and space are the four things that we all need. So uh, keep that in mind. An animal will need to be able to get access to their food. They need water in various locations. Um, my guitar is blocking that. Uh, the shelter and, uh, and space meaning not outer space, but meaning territory to move around in, correct? Like just, like I said, I'm in the White River First Nation territory and wherever you happen to be situated, you're always in the territory or space of some animal or some culture. So keep that in mind. All right. So Stephanie, I think still on screen, she's going to help me uh, demonstrate to you the um, motions or the actions that go with this song. And I think many of you will probably know this, but <clears throat> we talk about food. When we say food, you pat your belly. Okay. Yeah, we gotta get up there, Steph. <laughs> and then water is like this. Shelter, like a, I have to bend down, but Stephanie can do it. And then space, like that. Or if you have space, you could actually put your arms out like that. But I don't want you to be hitting anybody next to you. So, <laughs> so in my mind, music is not a spectator sport. In, in other words, uh, please sing along, please take the actions if it's okay with your teacher. And, um, and uh, yeah, let's have some fun. All right, so 
let's practice the food water shelter in space. So it goes like, and if you would repeat after me as well, I don't think we'll hear stuff. Or, so I go food and you do your symbol. So let's do it. Food, water, shelter, space, food, water, shelter, space. <laughs> I think you guys are going to do way better than stuffing. I forgot them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Belly, mouth. Top and uh, <laughs> and space. <base>. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> food, water, shelter, and space. So keep that in mind. And uh, so try to repeat after me when I say it. So food, food, water, water, shelter, shelter, space. And uh, while I'm singing the song and some of the the verses, if you hear me say food, water, shelter, or space, you could do the symbol or maybe something that is a kind of food, like hmm, branches and leaves underwater for a beaver. Good. Let's try it. Okay, I think we'll just jump right in. I will say, what's that habitat? And it, I, sorry, I will say, what's that? And I invite you to sing habitat. So like this. What's that habitat? And then in French, say quoi l'habitat. Let's get going. What's that habitat? Something weird's going on with my phone here. What's that habitat? Say quoi l'habitat? What's that habitat? Say quoi l'habitat, habitat, habitat is where it's at, very good. What's that habitat, say quoi l'habitat, what's that habitat, say quoi l'habitat, habitat, habitat is where it's at. Now every living creature needs some space to roam, we all need some shelter we can call our home. We'll die without food and water, it's simple as that. Well, you put it all together and it's called habitat. Awesome! What's that habitat? Say quoi l'habitat? What's that habitat? Say quoi l'habitat? Habitat, habitat is where it's at. Okay, we're gonna do the food, water, shelter, space. Are you ready? Here we go! And it's food! Water, shelter, space, food. Water, shelter, space, food. Water, shelter, space, habitat, habitat is where it's at. Just think about that beaver, he's in water all the time. He stockpiles leaves and branches all through the summertime. He stores them underwater, and in the winter he stays fat. Cause it's under the ice outside his lodge, shelter, and that's his habitat. What's that habitat? Say quoi l'habitat. What's that habitat? Say quoi l'habitat. Habitat, habitat is where it's at. Food, water, shelter, let's go! Get your actions ready, and it's food, water, shelter, space, food. Water, shelter, space, food. Water, shelter, space. Habitat, habitat is where it's at. Now the grizzly bear needs lots of space to find all the food she needs to feed herself and her cups real well with fish from meat and berries. She gets her water from the lakes and streams and by the autumn she's so fat. She stays in her den, doesn't eat all winter and that's her habitat. Awesome! What's that habitat? Say quoi l'habitat? What's that habitat? Say quoi l'habitat? Habitat, habitat is where it's at. Food, water, shelter, and space. And it's food, water, shelter, space, food, water, shelter, space, food, water, shelter, space, habitat, habitat is where it's at. Habitat, habitat is where it's at. I don't know what. Habitat, habitat is where it's at. Habitat! Oh, I'd love to hear you guys doing all that and see you, but not the format we have here. All right, well, I hope you had fun singing Habitat. And um, I just wanted to say that Take Me Outside Day to me is almost like, like Thanksgiving because 
like Thanksgiving is one time a year and we're really grateful for everything. But you know what? Being grateful every day is actually really, really good for us. And the same thing with take me outside day. Like one day a year, we like today, we get out and celebrate being outside. But doing that every, every day is so, so important for all of us, for our mental well-being, for our physical, for our bodies, for our minds, and, uh, and also helps us learn so much better. All right. So, uh, the, one of the animals I mentioned in that song, and you guys are probably guessing it, was this guy, the Canadian Viva, Castor Canadensis. Yes, and uh, we love beavers. The place I live is called Beaver Creek. How can it get better than that? So uh, the reason I wrote that fancy word right there, adaptations, is because the beaver is incredibly adapted to its environment, which means it has all sorts of features that allows it to survive in its habitat. So uh, what are some of the things maybe, let's see, well, you know that flat tail, right? Well, look, it's helping the, the beaver stand up here. Uh, and uh, it's also something that they slap, right, uh, on the water to warn you <laughs> to stay away, but also to warn other beavers that there might be a predator around. So just for fun, and we get to use this in the song, let's slap our hands like a beaver tail. So from flat, go, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Okay, what other adaptations do we have? Let's see. Oh, right there in its mouth, it has these big sharp teeth that can cut down trees. You guys know that. And they're so sharp that they can even cut down giant trees with that. How do they stay sharp? Well, the teeth in the front, we call those the incisors, they grow, they keep growing and growing and growing. Well, how come that doesn't go back in their head? Well, because as they're chewing, it wears down. And the front is really hard and the back is soft. So they're always hard, 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 like a chisel, sharp. And they can cut through those trees. So what else? Oh, yeah, look at it. has got, that fur it has is waterproof. It's eyeballs. It's got uh, two different sets of eyelids. The One of them is transparent or see-through. So they can, it's like they're diving goggles when they're underwater. And uh, of course, you know, they build dams and they live in lodges. I mean, there's just so many great things about beavers. And we'll mention a few of them in this song. So beavers live in water and we all need water, right? Food, water, shelter, and space. So I'm getting my little drink right now. Okay, so the beaver song. As I mentioned, they chew. So slapping their tails is one thing and chewing is another big part of the beaver. So let's do it. Just for fun, if you wish. Nobody's making you do anything. Okay, like this, you go chew, 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 chew. Let's try that together. Chew, 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 chew. That's what beavers do. We chew. Slap your tails, shout out loud. I'm proud to be a beaver. Yes. So we'll get to do that a bunch of times in the song. So let's do it. Chew, 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 that's what beavers do. We chew, slap your tails, shout out loud, I'm proud to be a beaver. Were you slapping your tails and chewing? Good. No time to play, there's work to do. Dams to build and logs to chew. Aspen wood tastes good, you know. Tree coming down, look out below. Chew, 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 that's what beavers do. We chew, slap your Shout out loud, I'm proud to be a beaver. Rodents come in different sizes. We are big, look at these incisors. Our teeth keep growing unless we're doing what we do best, and that is chewing. Chew, 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 that's what beavers do. We chew, slap your tails, shout out loud, I'm proud to be a beaver. Under the ice we dive down low, our lodge is entered from below. It's warm and safe and dry in here, because we're skillful engineers. Chew, 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 that's what beavers do. We chew, slap your tails, shout out loud, I'm proud to be a beaver. Slap your tails, sound the alarm, wet feet swim away from harm. River otter loves to eat, beaver snack and beaver meat, oh my. 
chew, 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 chew. That's what beavers do. We chew, slap your tails, shout out loud. I'm proud to be a beaver. Our waterproof fur and diving gear, plugs for the nose and plugs for the ears. We wear diving goggles too. You see, we're built to swim and chew. Chew, 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 chew. That's what beavers do. We chew. Slap your tails, shout out loud. I'm proud to be a beaver. Well, beaver dams been flood control in times of drought. They're a water hole. Don't forget your beaver pals. We build lodges, dams, and canals. We do. Chew, 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 chew. That's what beavers do. We chew. Slap your tails, shout out loud. I'm proud to be a beaver. Chew, 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 chew. That's what beavers do. We chew. Slap your tails, shout out loud. I'm proud to be a beaver. I'm proud to be a beaver. I'm proud to be a beaver. <sighs> that beaver song. For some strange reason, that's become really popular around here. In Beaver Creek, I wonder why. Ha! Okay. The next song is about an animal that also lives in the water. And some we sometimes, we might not like them very much. I don't know. It's a fish! <clears throat> this guy up here happens to be a Chinook salmon. And these are the, the kind of salmon that uh, grow up in the Pacific Ocean and make a migration all the way up the Yukon River, thousands and thousands of kilometers or miles to get to um, to the places where they have their babies. And uh, talk about adaptations. That's absolutely incredible. Well, you also know one of the adaptations that a fish has are these things back here. And I bet you guys know, ah, I don't know if I can point out it. Ah, right here behind the head. What are they called? Yeah, gills, exactly. So <clears throat> for fun in this song, I'm going, if you like, I'm going to invite you to actually make your own gills and look like a fish. So, start like this. Put your hands out like this, facing me. Turn them around. Bring them up beside your face, put them flat. Everybody done that? Where are your thumbs? Turn your thumbs out. And then, move them like that, just like a fish moves its gills. And why does a, why does a, a fish have gills? It helps it breathe underwater. That's how it gets the oxygen out of the water, using those gills and special structures inside its ear. Incredible adaptations. We couldn't live underwater. Okay, and oh, and if you wanted to go, you can look like a fish too. And later on in the song, we're actually gonna sing like a fish. Sing like a fish, that's weird. Anyway, I don't know if fish probably sing, but we probably can't understand them. But I'm gonna sing the way I think a fish might sound and. You can sing like we think a fish might sound. Maybe like, maybe. I've got a different way. All right, are we ready to go with the fish song? Water, water. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Oh, forgot one more thing. When I say, why should we care about fish? What I'd invite you to do is put up your arm and go like that. Fist pump and go, fish! Why should we care about fish? Fish! Like that. Yes. I saw someone raise a hand in the chat, but that's not exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Here we go. Now don't ever wish a world without fish because they're slippy and slimy. Because each little fish has its own special niche in crippling waters and streams that are grimy. The fish is our neighbor, it could be our lunch. The fish is a creature I like a whole bunch. Fish deserve our respect. They're part of the web that keeps us all fed. One fish eats another, and then it's our dinner. They're pretty to look at, amazing to see. On their own, or a part or a lake stream or river. They're absolutely fascinating. For adaptations, I give them a rating. Fish deserve our respect. Ready? And why should we care about fish? Fish! Like everything in nature, we have a part to play. And why should we care about fish? Fish! They're fascinating creatures with extraordinary features. Once you get to know them, they're okay. Once you get to know them, you'll think they're great. They're slick and they're slim, and so they can swim at incredible speeds through a desk, but medium, and some fish will travel to spawn in the gravel from 
ocean to river, it's truly a marvel. They live under ice, near sea, that's way hotter. Fish are so cool they can breathe underwater. How do they do that? With their gills. Oh, fish deserve our respect. And why should we care about fish? Fish! Like everything in nature, they have a part to play. And why should we care about fish? Fish! They're fascinating creatures with extraordinary features. But once you get to know them, they're okay. But once you get to know them, you'll think they're great. This is the part where we sing. So get your gills ready and get ready to sing like a fish. Here I go. <laughs> to hear what you guys were doing. Now don't ever wish a world of fish because you don't understand them. Cause each little fish has its own special niche. They're a part of nature we mustn't abandon. We gotta have fish. The more the better. We'll make a big difference if we were together. It's all of us. Fish deserve our respect. And how can we care for our fish? Fish! By not using products that pollute the lakes and streams. And how can we care for our fish? Fish! Protect their habitat, no matter where it's at. Every little action is okay. Everything we do to help is great. Let's sing like a fish again. Get those gills up. <laughs> Fish! <laughs> oh my goodness, I would so love to see all those schools of fish out there doing all the actions. Okay. <sighs> well, the next song is about another critter. And, well, you'll guess right away when I show you the picture. And read read the uh, the words. This is a song about bees, and uh, I think probably a lot of you know that bees are pretty important um, in our ecosystem and our planet. And you may have also heard that bees are kind of in trouble; that they are disappearing or declining their populations or are going away in many places. And there are some different reasons for that. Um, they say climate change could be part of that, uh, certain kinds of pesticides we use. But we do know that the bees are incredibly important for pollinating. And that means spreading the pollen from flower to flower or from plant to plant to make sure that the plants can grow and make seeds for the next generation. And uh, so in this song, I would love it if you wanted to, when we're singing the chorus, which has this in it, you'll catch on to the chorus pretty quickly. Please sing if you want, but you could also make it sound like a bee. Hopefully you won't uh, drive your teachers crazy with the bees buzzing sound. Maybe wait for the chorus to do that. And this is really fun for me because I have, uh, I don't think I've ever done this on one of these online shows, so. Okay, this is called, Won't You Help the Bees? A sec. Okay. This is fun because it's a little different. More like kind of a rap, you know? Come gather round friends and neighbors. Let me tell you a little tale about some critters you take for granted and you might even want to kill because you might find them kind of scary but they really are our friends and the only time they might hurt you is when they try to defend the place they live the food they eat their living community they're fast and they're smart and they fly around looking for a flowery treat they bring the pollen and nectar back to feed their family i'm wondering have you guessed it we're talking about the bees. Bees, won't you help them please? Cause they're feeling the squeeze. We really need these species. And bees, and the other pollinators, we want 
gonna see them later Won't you help them please Now the bee you probably think of is the furry bumblebee or the tiny ones we cultivate to make our sweet honey but bees aren't all about honeys and hive complex communities in fact most bee types live in the ground and they're known as solitary there are 20,000 different kinds of bees and they hold a lot of power they help our crops and forests to grow spreading pollen from flower to flower but around the world we're losing the bees because of climate change pesticides help those bees we gotta do it to help them we gotta decide to protect and grow their habitat make a happy place for the bees food water shelter space what every creature needs one way we can help them out is to grow lots of native plants and leave lots of places for them to grow don't ever say you can't bees won't you help them Cause they're feeling the squeeze We really need these species Let's hear you buzz Bees and the other pollinators We want to see them later Won't you help them please? There is always something we can do If we all chip in We can see them through Well, thanks for listening to the song about the need to save the bees And how they're in a lot of trouble and they're critters that we really need the Moral of the story is it's up to you and me be hopeful, be caring, be active, be wise, and we can bring back the bees. Bees, won't you help them, please? Because they're feeling the squeeze. We really need these species. And bees, and the other pollinators, we want to see them later. I hope you guys had as much fun doing that as I did. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, and of course, it's just not bees that are pollinating. Maybe you and uh, the rest of your class could kind of look it up and see what other kind of insects pollinate. Even mosquitoes pollinate. I know you, some of us need to be careful around bees because um, we might be allergic. But um, yeah, they're not really a, a critters to be scared of. Okay, and they really do help us out. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, one of the... Now, we've talked a lot about uh, animals, and we've mentioned climate change and maybe some problems with habitat and pesticides and so on. There are some other problems that we have on the planet, and one of them is this one. Plastic! <clears throat> um, probably a lot of us, probably a lot of you have heard that... Um, there's lots and lots of plastic going into the ocean like this and even creating big, big patches of, of plastic out in the, uh, in the ocean. But it's also all around us. You've, I'm sure you guys see litter here and there, plastic litter and so on. And the problem is a lot of that soft plastic, we can't even really recycle very easily anymore. So I'm encouraging us all, you, me, all of us, to try to use less plastic in our life because um, it's starting to be... A bit of a problem. Actually, it's a big problem. Sometimes when those plastics break down, they create little tiny, tiny little pieces called microplastics and they get circulated around. So what I'm encouraging us all to do is to get drastic with plastic, which means uh, try to cut out as much plastic as we can. I mean, plastic's pretty amazing. Like, you know, there's, there's, it's, I, this computer I'm on wouldn't be here if it wasn't for plastic and the cars we drive and so on. And yet all those single use pieces, like garbage bags and other kinds of bags and straws and all that. Um, we could probably do something to avoid that. So <clears throat> when I mean drastic, let's, let's 
be really hardcore here and try to cut down on our plastics. It's not always easy, but do our best. So in the song, every time that you hear uh, the word plastic, because they say it a lot of times, and if anybody's keen out there, they could actually even uh, count how many times I say it and put it into the chat. Uh, every time I say plastic, to be like a big X through, you could use your fingers or your arms to make a big X. No plastic, we don't want plastic. Okay, sounds good. Okay, here we go. Well, we've all heard the plastic in the ocean. A giant patch of garbage in the sea. There are piles of plastic at the recycling center because there's way too much to handle easily. We make far more plastic than we can deal with. Oh my, what are we to do? Use less plastic in our daily lives. What that means is reduce and refuse. Reduce, refuse. Let's get drastic with our plastic Cause its impact on the planet's not fantastic Let your actions be enthusiastic Oh, let's get drastic with our plastic Nice Now plastic is the most amazing product It comes from oil in the ground We can mold it into any sort of shape and size it takes a really long time to break down but when it degrades the tiny little pieces get into the water land and air these microplastics will be here forever one more reason we should care everybody now let's get drastic with our plastic Cause its impact on the planet's not fantastic Let your actions be enthusiastic Oh, let's get drastic with our plastic Now plastic is the most amazing thing We see it around us every day But too much plastic creates a lot of problems Together we've got to find a way to make it better, we can all do our part To reduce and refuse and make a change We use less plastic and find alternatives Encourage our friends to do the same Let's get drastic with our plastic Cause its impact on the planet's not fantastic Hope you don't think I'm being too bombastic Oh, let's get drastic with our plastic And let's get drastic with our plastic Planet on the planet's not fantastic Let your actions be enthusiastic Oh, let's get drastic with our plastic And let's get drastic with our plastic And let's get drastic with our plastic Nice! <sighs> yeah, so that's, you know, I want to leave you with some ideas, things that you can actually do to make the world a better place. And you probably notice that almost all my songs say something about things that we can do. You and I, and even if you're, you're young, you're, little, you're a little one, there's always something we do. And we can always encourage our parents to, to do something too. Okay, well, let's see. I'd really like to share this song with you because um, in sort of a, a different kind of way, it encourages us to take care of take, take care of the planet and every day be grateful for what we have and also to respect the land. <clears throat> so I call this song The Three Simple Rules. And the gentleman in the corner there is the person who said these words in a public meeting and they became quite famous here up in the Yukon Territory. And uh, I call them the three simple rules and I think they are just brilliant um, ways to live. Art, this is Art Johns, he's a, a Tagish elder, unfortunately passed away a number of years ago. Also a great musician, 
I, uh, I have a, a lot of uh, respect for Art and all the things that he brought to the community. And he's, he was thinking, you know, about hunting and fishing and that sort of thing. Um, but I also thought, wow, just to live on a planet, these are just great rules. Just from what we're saying, use, take only what you need. Maybe we don't need that plastic bag. We can do something else. Or, um, you know, if we get something, not just to use it and stick it in the corner after to make sure that, uh, you know, it's something that we need and we really, really use it. And if we can't, we pass it on to somebody else. So this is how the, the words go. And I'd love you to sing along if you can. If not, just listen. It's a beautiful little song. Respect all life. Take only what you need. And for heaven's sakes, use all that you take. Okay, I'm going to invite you to repeat after me those uh, three simple rules. And the little part near the end will change every time, but I'll give you some warning on that. Respect all life. Your turn. Take only what you need, take only what you need, and for heaven's sakes use all that you take, and for heaven's sakes use all that you take. I'm sure it's just beautiful out there. Great granddad was a man who was wise as he could be, and he always made a living from the land and from the sea. And he always fed his children with the bounties of this earth. Though he never was a rich man, but he knew his inner worth. And even though he had to take life to feed his family, he lived by three simple rules, and my dad taught these to me. Respect all life, take only what you need. And for heaven's sakes, use all that you take. Chief Joseph was a leader of his First Nations clan, and he always fed his people from the bounties of this land. Every plature has a spirit, every plant a living soul. What a magic way to live a life, and it made his people whole. And even during hard times, he knew down in his heart The wisdom of these simple rules, everyone must do their part For the Spirit's sake Respect all life, take only what you need And for the Spirit's sake, use all that you take And now I am a person of the 21st century and I wonder how to live my life on earth responsibly for I know that there are limits and we can't go on and on consuming and polluting until everything is gone and now I know the answers are as old as they can be if my great granddad were here today Say these words to me Respect all life Take only what you need For the planet's sake And for the planet's sake Use all that you take Respect all life Take only what you need And for the planet's sake Use all that you take <laughs> this is cool. I keep seeing these little hearts going up and boy, that's the way I feel about this song. Yes, it's such a um, such beautiful words from Art and uh, every time I sing this I like to honor Art and his contribution in this world. Okay, um, I know the time's getting on but um, Steph, could we do the Take Me Outside song? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think okay. that's that's a perfect one to include. Okay, I know we're just uh, running a little bit later, so I hope everybody can stick around for for the uh, for the prizes and all that. Mm -hmm. I have questions? I want to answer some questions. Okay, so <laughs> this this is an experiment, um, and I'm going to go back to the screen. But I think what we're going to do here is this. I this is actually online on YouTube. You can find it, but it's the um, 
the Take Me Outside um, song with the words so that you'll be able to see it and sing along with it. So um, I think all I have to do is do this and hopefully you can see the screen there. That looks good. Okay. And we're going to start up the video and we have no song. We're just going to sing along with it. Oh, here we go. We love you, teacher. And you know what? I'm going to back up because it got a little ahead of me there. This is a new thing for me. This is great. Okay, here we go. We love you, teacher. We love what you do. You help us to learn and to play. You show school stuff and you're fair and you're smart. We like to see you each day. If there's one thing we change, though, and it's not all your fault, it's too much time spent inside school. There's a world to discover outside these walls. So, teacher, we're counting on you. Oh, that's a little different. Oh, please take us outside, teacher. Please take us outside. There's a world to discover outside these walls. So, please take us outside. We know you're busy and a bit overworked. Going out at the school seems a chore. But what if it turns out we are better behaved and learn more and faster outdoors? You may have your doubts, but we know that we'll thrive. The research shows clearly it's true. Being outside in nature makes us happy and smart. Dear teacher, we're counting on you. Oh, please take us outside, teacher. Please take us outside. There's a world to discover outside these walls. So please take us outside. We like our tablets, our TVs, our phones. But outdoors is so much more fun. We can learn from the trees and the grass and the bugs. Get vitamin D from the sun. So next time you're making your plans for our class, be as place-based as you can be. There's a world to discover outside these walls. So we ask you so respectfully. Oh, please take us outside, teacher. Please take us outside. There's a world to discover outside these walls. So please take us outside again. Please take us outside, teacher. Please take us outside. There's a world to discover outside these walls. So please take us outside. Please take us outside. Take us outside. Keep going if you want. Please take us outside on the recording. We got a bunch of kids doing that as they go outside. Okay, I'm going to stop the screen share and here I am back. Okay, that's our show for today. Thank you very much. I hope you, uh, you had fun with that song and um, yeah, I hope you get out today or tomorrow sometime and that art project sounds really cool. I'm going to get the kids at Nell and the Bestie John School out making some art this afternoon. Yay, awesome. I'm so excited to see. Uh, and there's already, I've looked this morning and folks on the Eastern and Atlantic time zones have already been out making their nature art. And so there's some great inspiration already if you're, if you're on social media and you search up the hashtag, things like that. There's already some really great stuff happening. But thank you so much, Remy. That was amazing. I, it's always such a highlight. We so appreciate having you here. So much fun to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and you can see, I know it's it's webinar style, but there's there's tons of little hearts and claps coming through in the reactions. And <laughs> I see that. That's so cool. I love that. Um, it might just be one person pressing it over and over and over again, but <laughs> they really, really like it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we, you know, we got five minutes or so to ask a few questions, and there was so many questions that came through the chat. Uh, I know Nicholas in the background was... Um, the <laughs> busy keeping track of all of those questions um so 
one that people were asking about is that every time you you were singing a song, you would mention beaver or fish or um, anything like that. And the bees, people would always ask specific questions about those animals. And so I think in general, what would your advice be if people, um, they want to learn more about one of these animals or they have something now they're excited to learn about? What what How can kids learn more about something they're excited about? Oh, well, you know, uh, the most important thing to have is curiosity. And I am so happy that people are curious about these cr creatures. And I would say I'm not an expert on any of those things. So just like uh, I did, I uh, did some research. And that these days, of course, involves a lot of things online. But your your school library or your public library will have lots of great books on these, these creatures. Um, uh, I think even the Take Me Outside Day uh, resource section has got some really good uh, links to um, to different um, sources as well. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. I, other than that, I don't have anything specific. Well, I, I think that's that's great to hear because I think people then assume that, you know, you know all the things about it, that you're an expert on then the fish and the beavers and the bees and all the plastic issues, things like that. But really, you're just you're finding something you're interested in and learning a bit more and and then it gives other people a place to jump off from yeah absolutely i mean any of these topics any of these things you could just get right into it and learn so much more i, mean, I know a lot of, a lot about a lot of, a little bit about a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> but you know there's nothing to say that you can't dig in and, and find out more yeah. yeah and people are really interested also in in how you started this journey and what makes you so excited about the environment and animals and habitats and how that ended up turning into songs and you writing those songs yeah yeah that's um <clears throat> that is a good question you know i think about that sometimes myself and uh, i think i was very fortunate to be able to uh, be out in nature when i was a, a young lad um we did quite a bit of camping and uh, that sort of thing my grandparents um, had a farm near Kingston, Ontario, and uh, they had retired and it was sort of going a little bit back to nature and I was able to ha hang out a lot watching the muskrats and the and the, the groundhogs and all the, the water critters and so on. So um, I got very interested in that from just being outside. So, you know, reinforces that this whole idea of being outside. And uh, music was something, we had a bit of music in our family and my sister played guitar. And uh, when I was 16, my my mother bought me a guitar and got me a few lessons and uh, suddenly uh, I was writing songs and uh, they were on all sorts of different topics but later on as I became more and more passionate about environment and trying to make a, a change on, in the world um, I started writing songs about about those topics about animals and and, and plants and the environment and uh, then I discovered that wow people were listening and and getting inspired getting new neat ideas from it so I just got encouragement to do more and more. So <laughs> and have, that's what happens, you know, it's, it's a lot of it's just to take a chance, you know, a lot of it's just to, um, you have a talent. I think we all have um, our individual talents to make the world a better place. So for me, maybe music and talking, maybe you're really good at, uh, with your body, you can do stuff in dance or in your sports or you draw it, you're really good at drawing or photography. There's all sorts of ways we can contribute to this, this world. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and I hope folks, uh, yeah, take that from today and go out and use that curiosity to find it. Go make some art this afternoon and send it yeah, in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank yeah. you, Remy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and from, you know, you've you've created all these amazing songs and been able to travel around and perform them. And do you have a favorite place, either just that you really love or a favorite place that you've performed, something that sticks out in your mind? Oh boy. Um, oh man, I think a almost any time that I'm in a school and, and get to play for live audiences, I think that's, that's, it can be anywhere um, in the world and, and, uh, and, and that's fun. I mean, um, I early at the beginning, you talked about Antarctica and that, I mean, of course that's, <laughs> we're not going to be going there very often. The carbon <laughs> footprint of that travel is very high, but I was fortunate to go with um, students on ice for, um, several expeditions uh, to the Arctic and the Antarctic. And um, that's something for old students that you might be interested in getting involved with sometime. But I mean, of course that's, in terms of a setting, that's pretty extraordinary, <laughs> the Antarctica, but um, 
yeah, I like anywhere, anywhere that I can share my music, I'm pretty happy to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. And I, I mean, the Antarctic and the Arctic obviously has a special place in your heart because you mentioned before we started the webinar officially today that you're working on an album that's focused on the Arctic. Yeah, that's right. I'm a little behind schedule on that, <laughs> being a full-time <laughs> teacher. But yes, um, hopefully, maybe by this time, well, next time next year, I should have it ready to go. So maybe we'll have some Arctic songs. Um, but yeah, I've, uh, I was uh, received a nice grant from uh, Polar Knowledge Canada to, to work on some Arctic-related educational materials. And I think songs will be a good part of that. Amazing. Oh, thank you. And I know that there's a lot of thank yous coming in through the chat and through the reactions and things like that as well. So I just want to extend my gratitude through myself and through all of the many people that are watching today and all the classes. And I know we didn't get to all the questions. There were so many, but. <laughs> oh man, I'm so sorry too. <laughs> I bet there's some good ones. <laughs> there is. Yeah, there really is. I'll show, I'll send you the list after Remy, but thank you so much for being here. It's always such a delight. And hopefully folks, um, we put the uh, link to Remy's website and his YouTube channel in the chat. Um, but if you missed that, you can always look up his name and you'll be able to find it there too. So. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. As we say here in uh, in in this territory, um, in the language of Upper Tanana, Sini, Sini Show. Mm, thank you. Just thank you. Thank you very much. And Haichka in Halkaminam, where I am <laughs> okay. at. Thank you. Um, and folks, we're going to draw for some prizes in a minute here. So do stick around because we do have four amazing prizes. And there were so many questions that, uh, yeah, there's lots, lots to choose from. And so I'm going to just let you know what the prizes are here. So we have four to give away today. Um, we have $25 to give to the Outdoor Learning Store, and they've supported us this day, this week, the, all year. We love the Outdoor Learning Store. So thank you to them for donating uh, $25 to a lucky winner today. And we also are giving thanks to Mountain Equipment Company who help uh, support us and help keep, keep this event free for everyone participating. So thank you so much to Mountain Equipment Company. And we'll be giving away $50 to spend there. And we also want to thank our partners at Water Rangers because they donated a compact water testing kit for today. So that's really cool. And if you were feeling inspired and wanting to learn more about water and salmon and the fish that are in that water, and I, so there was a lot of questions about that today too, then this can be a great jumping off point. Uh, so we'll, that's our th third prize. And then our fourth prize will be $25 to uh, spend at the Take Me Outside store. I have my Take Me Outside shirt on today because it's Take Me Outside day. So um, thank you so much for sending in all those questions. And um, I just am seeing if folks are still here to, to announce those winners. And so our first prize winner is Roseanne VEE, -E, chosen randomly from our, our uh, question askers. Thank you, thank you. So Roseanne, if you wanna send your email into the chat to the host and panelists, we can do that. Um, but Nicholas also just put our email in the chat there. So you can reach out that way too. So congratulations, Roseanne Van EE, -E, our first winner. Our second winner today, Ms. Lisa's grade four class. Congratulations, Ms. Lisa's class. Congrats, congrats. Uh, and Sarah Reynolds, all Sarah Reynolds, congratulations. Sarah Reynolds uh, with the third winner and our fourth winner. And from our all the amazing questions that were asked, oh my goodness, I'm just I'm overwhelmed with how many there were. Holy moly, uh, <laughs> Suzanne Fortier, or for I think it's Fortier. Sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong. There, uh, you are our fourth winner. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, and just if I called your name as one of the winners, please um, email us. And uh, thank you. that pretty much wraps us up right on the hour, which I'm very happy about. <laughs> Almost never happens, but um, yeah, Remy, thank you so much for being here. And I hope um, we can have you back next year and hear some Arctic songs. I'd love it. I'd love to. <laughs>
Perfect. <laughs> that'll, give me, and, that'll give me that gives me a target. Yeah. <laughs> End of October of next year. We'll okay. see. We'll see. No pressure. No pressure. We oh, love okay. all your songs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and folks, I hope everyone can uh come to our uh, events tomorrow. It's Health and Wellbeing Day and we have Alaj Balde, who is an amazing professional figure skater. And we have Abigail Strait, who is a um, Olympian who just won a Olympic medal last year in Beijing for ski jumping. So I hope to see you all there. And I hope to see all of your nature art happening uh, today as well. And the rest of the week, if today doesn't work, you have all week to do it. So uh, until next time, thank you so much, everybody, and happy Take Me Outside Day.